Okay, my friends, if you've been following me, you know that I've been on NASA's case forever. And here they are up on Mars saying this is the kind of rock we had hoped to find. Well, what they're looking for is signs of life, but they're looking for bacterial life, like some kind of little enzymes or something to show that there was some life there at one time, which doesn't exist anymore. Or bacteria that could they could actually come back to life if the conditions were right something like that there's no life up there to speak of now let me show you what i have found because there was previously scads of life okay we are going to get to my evidence of what they're talking about and some of these are from pictures from mars from the curiosity mission and then I have the spectral analysis of all the different types of stones and so forth. But before we get into my stuff, let's just see what they have to say about the Mars rocks. This is a very important thing from this Jezero crater, especially rich in carbonate, a mineral link to habita habita habitability. And a lot of it has to do with silicates. Now listen to what they have to say. All right, and this is uh, Mars Rocks. Sample 24 is called Comet Geyser, and we collected it from the Bunsen Peak Rock on the margin unit. The Comet Geyser sample is really exciting for several reasons. This rock is dominated by silica and carbonate. These phases are known on Earth to be good at preserving biosignatures. Carbonate is a phase that forms an association with fluids such as water, which is really important in our search for evidence for past life on Mars. It's still a bit of a mystery what this rock is. There are interesting textures um, that could be consistent with either an igneous rock or a sedimentary rock. And that's what makes it so exciting to us as scientists is because we get to put our thinking caps on and really try and solve this puzzle. All right, igneous and sedimentary. And uh, she showed some samples of the actual rock itself right here. Now, whoops, what did she have to say? The rock is dominated by silica and carbonate. Now, I know what to look for here. And this is a core, so they drilled around this and left this as undisturbed as they could. Uh, that's my understanding. But I understand these colors and they relate to biology. And I understand these textures here too. And they relate to biology. All right, they drilled down through this rock and they said it consisted of about 75% carbonate grains. Those are like biological little bits and pieces that all could sort of settle down together and was cemented together by almost pure silica. That's why they're so excited, because it's a silica. Because it is known that the silica, the silicon, the silicates, preserve soft body creatures. Now, they think this is just sediment. This is not just sediment. This was literally a body part from something, I don't know what. But the carbonate, I mean the silica is in these, just as I wrote in my paper. All right, this is from my paper, Fascia Facilitated Fossilization. What they're looking at up there is a body part. And I'm gonna show you all, all the other body parts they missed. Now in this paper I put down the skin has 50 times the silicon as other tissues. They're drilling through skin and they're seeing a lot of the silicates and they're getting real excited but I can see the layers of skin as they went through it. And then I just put down silicon carbide is the fossil version of skin. It's very, very hard. And, um, and then, then I talk about the fluid filled highway that, that tubular fluid filled fabric network. That's the, that's the interstitium that goes through the, through the body. And this paper I wrote back in 2015 about my my mud fossils. And I, I, right over here it says fascia is instrumental in perfectly preserved fossilization in wet, fine, continuously wet mud. 
The product can be exact copies of living creatures, flesh, color, and all, and I have all of those. But what happens is this was a great worldwide flood and everything was saturated with silicates and that's what the preservative was, exactly as the paper right here. Exceptional preservation of soft body creatures promoted by silica rich oceans. That's why they're so, so excited about this being because they're cemented by pure silica and they think that's that's a big deal which it is but Mars was hit by the same same catastrophe that Earth was. We almost got hit by Venus and it went past the Earth and it caused all kinds of problems and it came back again and it hit, hit did the same thing again. It didn't hit Earth but very close but it did hit Mars and it created these terrible terrible scars on Mars. You see that scar? Alright that's the Mars Vallis Marineris crater and I believe it hit up here and came this direction and it was literally an electric discharge from Venus because Venus spins backwards it's extremely charged up it's hot as can be it's about 800 900 degrees something like that and this is what you see from Venus this is just like exactly like an electrical discharge and that's Venus and and it's all written in the ancient text and every culture on the face of the planet had the same story and it wasn't that long ago Velikovsky went to every museum and library and cultural center and all the historic places and monuments and museums everywhere and he got the story and all the ancient papyruses and tablets and all that a very very accomplished scholar friend of Einstein's went all around the world, then published the book Worlds in Collision, which talks about this collision between Venus and us primarily, but then it went, it went later and smacked right into Mars and wiped Mars right out towards atmosphere completely off and killed everything on it. But everything on it was just like it is here on Earth. The things that are on Mars are biological. They're all over the place biological. And they're talking about this today, finding these grains of stuff, and, and they're going to analyze them and hope they can find some microbes. Well, let me show you what they did miss. You see this? This was all over the news on August 2015. Crab on Mars. Mars crab. A big, big, a big joke out of it. 2015. 20, crab spotted. Now, here's what it really was. That it wasn't a crab, it was this right here somewhere, right there. Alright, this is the shot right down here. Blown up, it's this. This is what they call the crab. Now, where you're looking at right there, I'm going to tell you straight right up front, that is an artery. These are the blood vessels that service this tissue, which is muscle. I'm going to prove this to you in a moment. That is the vein <laughs> sucks the blood back up to the heart. This punch, pumps it down and into the muscle, which is this. You see it's right here? All those little legs are running off and going into this muscle, and it's feeding all that muscle with blood, and a lot of blood. Now, this dust is just the red bloody soft tissue eroded out, just dusted off. There's no rain up here whatsoever. This is Mars. All right, Mars has no rain, has virtually no moisture in the atmosphere because there's virtually no atmosphere. And as far as I'm concerned, it was wiped out when Venus smashed right across. That's wider than the, the whole United States, that scar across Mars. Now these are the sarcomeres. Now I want you to look at this very carefully. All right, so don't forget, this is our blood. And these need blood, I mean like unbelievable amounts of blood. Now these cracks right down here are the little sarcomere pinchers. And these are the connective tissues. 
Now normally this red blood would pull them together. And the whole, you know, one here and one here and one here, and they'd all pull together and you'd contract your muscle. And this is what it's going to look like in a real live person. Well, I'm going to show you a couple of things. One of them is a rock that's going to show this is, is so exceptionally perfect. And it's going to show there's a ton of red blood amongst the sarcomeres. You have to have a lot of red blood to run those babies. They take a lot of oxygen. Okay, so here we are with the muscle sarcomeres. They erode right down here and right down here, and, and the red stuff just comes away, but all of these little fibers stay. So you'll see these blocks of these little fibers, just like I showed you, and this is contracted and this is relaxed muscle. And this is exactly what it is right here. These are those sarcomeres. And here's all the red stuff eroded out of it, which is the soft stuff. And this was the, the uh, red blood. Now let me show you another rock sample showing sarcomeres that are still pristine. Check this out. All right, so this is the surface up here, the, the skin, basically. This is the fleshy part just below the skin until you hit, hit the muscle. These are the sarcomeres, exactly what I showed you. This is red blood. That's red, red blood. And if you don't have it, you, they don't work. You have to have it flushed with blood all the time. There's tons of blood in muscles. I mean, gushing with blood. And um, I have the same thing here. Let me show you the ones I have in my shop. Oh, this is basically the same thing as I just showed you. Up here is the surface, which is basically the skin, the outer layer. Then you have all of this blood flushing down into this pink muscle. That's a tendon. They don't have blood to speak of. Tendons are just like, like rubber bands. There's almost no blood whatsoever in there. But here, you see here, it started to pour. That's an actual artery. Now, if that had the little legs sticking off of it, it would be exactly like the Mars crab. It would be identical. And it's flushing blood into this muscle so that the muscle can do its contractions and so forth. This is primarily connective tissue as it does its abrupt transitions. It transitions here and then here, and then you're into your really floppy muscle. Here, it's still very tendony. All right, that's very, very tough stuff. And this was attached to a bone. I have the shot showing where the bone is. Somewhere here. Here it is. Here's the two of them together. There's a bone right here. And that pin pins the bone to the tendon and then the tendon to the muscle. So right here, we're seeing that little pin. The bone is up here. And that's the muscle. All right, so that's sarcomeres, and that's the red blood has to be in there to make those sarcomeres work. And those sarcomeres were right here up on Mars, called the Mars Crab. All right, here we go, two and one. This is the Mars Morse code. Again, big thing about it, they saw it, and they just let it go. This is pinched together skin. This is pinched together skin. This is expanded skin. Stretched. Stretched. You see it? Stretch. Stretch. Pinched. That's pretty standard. That's sort of relaxed skin. And it's just nobody's pulling, nobody's doing this, no, that. This is crunched, crunched, and spin. Now, you can see these straps. That's what these things are. They're straps, and they can pull, and they're a little bit gooey. They're not as tough as the balls. The balls are the toughest things going. The skin and the tissue under it is also very erosive. It erodes away, but in this case, it doesn't erode from water. There is no water here. And that's how I know we're up on Mars. There's not a drop of water touched this, ever. Not ever. Think this over now. You know, please use your mind. All right, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. 
What I'm showing you here is very, very difficult to dispute. This is pinched together, whatever it is, some kind of fabric, some kind of fabric, some kind of stretched fabric. The balls are the anchors. Now, there is an anatomical um, picture showing this exact same thing. It's called interstitching. Now, here it is in a creature. So, don't forget, we got the balls and they have little straps coming out of them and normally they're together but they can stretch as you can see and the, these balls are not they don't erode very easily see how they're all over the place but the straps are gone because the straps are, are a little bit gooey the balls are not gooey now here's what happens in actual interstitium hold on where did it go interstitium where are you there it is. All right. Now this is this is that Mars Morse code. There it is, right there. And you're looking down at it. These are all the balls, and these are the straps that run around. And if you pull this this way, the bags of fluid would go that way, and it would stretch out. And these would stretch. These, are, but the balls will pretty much stay where they're attached to. That's they're the anchors. That way there you can do all that sort of stuff, but then you sort of come back where you're supposed to be. Now, look at how tiny these things are, these balls. Now, we're talking about creatures that are just astronomically large, and therefore these balls, which you just saw up on Mars, and these are the same thing, the Moki marbles. Right. This is also from the same interstitium. And this is the same thing here. This right here is the skin. This right here is the skin. This right here is that flappy, fleshy stuff with all the anchors in it and all of the floppy things. And all of those balls have eroded out of this wall. And here they are right here because they don't go away. The straps turn into mud. You see, these are all mud. The straps and all the fleshy stuff just turned into the mud. There it is, just mud. These do not do that. But they are being colonized by some kind of sea stuff that is eating the blood. There's blood in these. Now, in the desert, different story. These are these washed off of this, the, you know, the um, fleshy stuff washed away sometimes, some huge flood or whatever, and they just left the balls. And they're just laying around here, so there's, you know, of course this is a desert. But they're the same things as these, and which is in skin, and they're the same things as these, which are the Moki marbles, and this is up on Mars. It's the exact same thing. So I have shown you the skin, the Moki marbles, the tendon, the muscle, the Mars crab, the artery, the vein, uh, the dusted off bloody, you know, residue that comes out be from between these connective tissues. All right, you, you've seen this, which is the interstitium, and the, the, those are going to end up being moky marbles if everything else eroded. Those are going to end up being just the, the balls, just like I showed you a minute ago. Now, um, this also is on Mars, and that is not just some kind of little holes that are there for no reason. I, I look at this as some kind of biology, and I would say this is more than likely some form of a lung. You see all these little things? That's not just sand dunes. And you see all these little pock, pock spots in there? I think this is, um, these are alveoli. And that's a, from a lung. Now, I don't know how they took this picture or how big it is or anything other than that it's from NASA. And this here, to me, that's the, this is some kind of like oxygen tube or something. And there's little spicules coming out of there. And up in here, there's going to be some kind of transfer. Look at this. This is too, this is too much. Too much too much detail, way too much detail.
Look at that. That's not natural. That's biological. It's not just some sand dunes and that piled up there. All right, but it's no, well, it's just one of those things. And of course the blueberries, we saw those, and then this is the basement skin under the blueberries. Now the blueberries are all over the body, I mean just literally everywhere. Because you have to, even all of your fascia is the same thing, it's in the fascia. You pull this way, pull that way, you have to come back to where you started from. And that's what these things do. They're all everywhere, and some of them, there are all kinds of different designs, depending upon where they are in the body. Um, what have I shown you? This, again, this is not millions of years in one picture. This is tendon. Remember I showed you that pin and the center of the tendon was a real heavy duty spot? That's it. The only reason this is still standing is because it's tendon. And tendon is extremely high on the CaCO3 level, the calcium carbonate. It's very strong, tough. The muscle just erodes away, as we saw it just withers away and the bone eroded away because of the conditions in the salty hot water flood. The bones basically are dissolved. Tendon, no. Tendon just lasts forever. And remember the tendon I showed you on my stuff that I have right here in my shop is, um, is that tendon right there. There it is. And that circle right there coming out that piece is this is all tendon and that's why it's still there because there's just no there's, it's very very tough and it, it gets into a muscly thing which is not tough to speak of and then the other side was where the bone was and that just eroded away because it's it's very weak actually where'd it go there it is you see the in my thing here, it's, I can still see where it is. I think it's on the other side of this. And that's that pin right there. You just can't see the, the bone on that one. So. But anyway, that's what's up on Mars. That's the Mars crab. It's just like that. All right, look at this. This is, I find, very interesting. You see all these little pock marks and you see all this little stuff right up close to it. This is in my microscope. And this is, is um, well, pretty damn close. <laughs> these, these little white spots could very well be these little pock marks we're seeing down there. And they're in the anchor zone. And then there is a blood zone out here, as you can see. You see, it goes from that, transitions from this where it has all these little white spots here until you hit the, the red blood which is right there. Alright, so this you see these pock marks? I don't know if you can or not, hold on. See those little pock marks? And then it transitions over into the red blood. Now, I think that's pretty darn close to what we're seeing there, those pock marks. And then it transitions right over into that red, f I, I would say that's red. But it's, it's blood one way or the other. As far as I'm concerned, that's, that's the same texture we're seeing up above here. You see it? And that, my friend, is blood. There's that, that there's no question about. And that, and that is from a meteorite. That's from a meteorite. I know, it's hard to believe, but that's true. All right, this is why I can say this is a meteorite, and it, it was blood. This was a blood foramen, they call it. And there's, there's blood came up through there, so it was flush with blood. When it got overheated coming through the atmosphere, it literally exploded. All right, those are not, hold on a second. Let me dry it up a smidge here so you can see it a little better. That's, that black right there was because it cooked up down here. There's, a, there's a blood vessels down in here. 
and it just exploded. That right there is clotting fiber. You see down, I just panned down inside. That's actually clotting fiber, and that is what your body makes too. And it covers, and then a scab forms over the top. But this, the reason this is all black here was because the boil, boiled blood ex exploded it out. And that's why it's opened up and, and it, it, started, it had started to make its own fiber and clotting fiber. I have, um, I have one here. Well, let me show it to you. Hold on. All right. This is basically the, ex the same thing I'm going to be showing you, only the blood will still be here. And it's, it's one of these, I believe that you would call that a foramen. And the blood, I believe, came up through here, vein and artery coming up through here. And I'll show you the ones in the specimen I have here. Now, that is the cavity like we just saw above. Now, this one didn't explode because it's a terrestrial. It never heated up to where it exploded. So there's no black, black rim around. It. Now, that is the blood, though. So the actual blood is here, and that blood is a scab, obviously, just like you get on your own skin. Now, I move the scab away from the clotting fiber, which is, I, I believe they call it fibrogen or fibrin. Now, up here, it's still there. And don't forget, this one blew out, so that's why it's all blacked off. These, I believe, are the vein and artery right in that area, somewhere down in here. But I, I, I'm sure that's one of them. Now, so now let's go back to the specimen. Here, here it is. Now, I moved that away and could see the clotting fiber. All right, so we're still in the same specimen. Then I took everything away, and here is the vein and the artery. Well, this is actually the artery. See the red artery? And this is the actual tube uh, that was the vein the tube that would run up to wherever it went to to continue on. That's what these foramen do. They're transfer points. And there's the two little spots that whatever invested in there, I don't know what it would have been, but. That's how the blood moved from here to the next to the muscle or whatever that was wrapped around it. I, I believe that's probably the case. And this one up here you can see now, I believe those are the vein and artery there. There's pretty good red there. I don't know. It's hard to say. Is that the black right there? Not the red over there? I don't know. But it's absolutely a, a meteorite it had been cooked up and exploded that blood out of there. <laughs> All right, so don't forget my my allegation is that red blood boiled and exploded this plate right off the top. That's what we're just looking at right there, that red blood right there. Now there was another piece right on top here, and it just it got so hot and and boiled, and it just snapped that piece off. That's what I'm saying. That's what I believe did happen. And there it is right there. All right, that's actual red blood. And it boiled. And then that plate that was on the top had nowhere to go. You see? Now up here is a different substance. Right there. Is is what I believe is the anchor part. And then it goes into the red blood that serviced 
uh, uh, probably some muscle. I would think that it had to be servicing muscle. This is a lot of red blood there. All right, this is one of the anchors, one of the tendon anchors. It's just smashed and ripped off. But that's, that's where it is. Now that's the skin or, you know, the actual flesh around it. And normally that would anchor down in there all these little tendon fibrils. But somehow it just got torn off the, the, the stalk. There would have been a stalk going into there and running to whatever it ran to to anchor it. And I believe this is a muscle. I believe there's... That's all I can tell. It's hard to tell. It's a little bit cooked up. But that's... That's what an anchor looks like. You see the red blood in there with it? And there's a whole batch of them in here. There's another one over here. You gotta put a little water on them to see them. You see right away they change. Some kind of an anchor. I don't know what it anchors to, but they're all over the place on this thing. So I would say this is a, a muscle with tendons. And that right there, that's the clincher. That tells me no, virtually no question whatsoever. This boiled off and exploded outwards. And that's why it's all black around it. And um, I mean, I've shown you enough, I think that it, it supports what I'm saying. The red blood spot here, this is, this is just crazy. And they all, a lot of them come through with really wet blood. Kentucky meat shower in 1876. Chunks of meat fell all over this woman's farm. See that? Isn't that outrageous? It's just red blood, and when it boiled up, it, the plate that was on top of it had to go somewhere and it just popped off. All of those little tiny holes there. You see all those little holes and little round spots? I believe those are where the little blood vessels came in. And um, and they just sort of blew up and left those little round hole signatures there. And this is uh, the outside edge of it where it sort of cooked up coming in. Let me put a little water on that. In order to see things, you need a little bit of moisture. Some kind of a membrane or something going around there. Of course, it's cooked up now, but. So, all biology, you know, I, it's, this one's really not in too bad a shape, but boy, I'll tell you, that blood is just stunningly red. And like I say, that's been sitting around my shop for 10 years at least. All you gotta do is put some water on it and back the blood you got. All 
Okay, just just so you know, the, the vein and the artery, that's the vein. Normally that would be black. I scratched it all, scratched, scratched it all up. This is the artery. And that's all that, this is the meteorite that came through space. And that's where that blood was. All that red blood. And it is heavy. And it's magnetic. Well, you know, what? that's misleading. When you say magnetic, it's not magnetic. It attracts magnets because the, the blood that was in here, some of it has boiled off hot enough to become iron. And then it, then it attracts magnets. All right, Mag magnets are attracted to it because it's iron. Okay, so back to the heart of the matter is this NASA, wow, we found this new kind of rock. We just have been hoping to find this debris. And I'm showing things that I can't see how they can possibly be just completely dismissed without any any consideration whatsoever. That just doesn't make sense. We're spending literally billions of dollars to do this research when we could be examining a little closer the things that they're finding. I think I've been pretty, it's been pretty obvious what I've shown is quite substantial and and I have evidence to support the things that I'm saying. All right, I don't see any reason to go any further with this. I, I think I've shown that they should at least take another exam of what they had originally found with the curiosity. And if they can explain the things that I have shown in any other way than the way I have shown them, I'd like to understand why. And I think I deserve that answer. I, don't you think you deserve that answer from the people that we're pay funding to do this? I think we deserve the answer. I certainly deserve an answer. They ask, do you have any questions? Do you have any of this? I say, yes, I do. For, not you. No, no, not you. I think we should just stand up and say, hey, I want some information on this. This just isn't right that you can just dismiss all that evidence that Roger has presented. And I did. I presented it to all of them straight across the board as soon as curiosity hit, basically. And that was almost 10 years. Well, I think it was 10 years ago. So it's time to, you know, get off the mark here and examine what is in front of your faces and just sit walking around in circles and spending money like water, like water. And we don't even have the water anymore. We got a lot of problems. This is not really something that's going to solve a whole lot of issues. And it's just being forgotten about the truth of the matter. It's now a search for funding. It, it appears that straight across the board in all of the institutions, academia, all of them. And I mean, I understand, you know, you got to make a living, but you got to be honest about it, too. And, and look at what's presented, not hide from it. All right, on my last word, I love you all. I think you should stand up, talk to your professors, talk to your friends, talk to whoever will listen to you. And don't be intimidated. You can see what I'm showing is real. Somebody's got to speak about it or it's just continue to be hidden forever. All right? I still love you. <laughs> All right, bye.